All right, YouTube, welcome to another edition of the Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. Ashley Dash in the studio. We're getting ready to go live in a couple of seconds. So join us. All right, everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of this week's Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. It is a, uh, uh, I won't say it's a dreary, cold day in Atlanta, <laughs> but it's not exactly a hot day in Atlanta. And for those of you that know, I moved from Myrtle Beach, so I'm a flip-flops and shorts kind of guy. So I'm a little disappointed, even though I know it's supposed to be quote-unquote winter and all that good stuff. And I want a white Christmas and a, all that good stuff. But I'm okay with a hot Thanksgiving and actually a hot Christmas. So, you know, it's kind of one of those days. But uh, nonetheless, it's still a beautiful day in the ATL. And today is going to be a great show, as always. I have my very special guest in the studio today, Mrs. Ashley Dash. Hi, guys. So she will be talking about all things career today. You know, uh, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing shows that will kind of get you ready for the new year. Things that we say we're going to do, uh, mind, body, spirit, all that good stuff. So those are the kind of shows you can look forward to because, look, we all know we're going to make those New Year's resolutions. Well, I don't. But we all know we're going to make those New Year's resolutions that we're not going to keep. But now that I have this platform, I'm going to try to help you keep them. So that's what these next couple of shows are going to be about. So today, Ashley's going to be talking about all things career, getting you from that job to that dream career, you know, with the uh, expense accounts and, and <laughs> you know, driving the fancy cars and going to pick out the beautiful home. Ashley's going to get us there today, myself included. So I'm actually going to be listening as she talks. Uh, and FYI, I met Ashley once again in the group, the Now Group Network Opportunity Weekly. Uh, she stood in front of the room and she just has this presence and uh, I just fell in love with it and I reached out to her and she had no qualms about coming on to share her expertise. So I'm, without further ado, Miss Ashley, introduce yourself to the people. Tell us about your background. Hi guys, what's going on? It's Ashley Dash here, your favorite career branding expert. Yes, hey my favorite. Favorite. So just to tag on, um, I do not like New Year's resolutions either. I hate them because I know statistically that most of us break them within the first two weeks. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So. And there's your statistical data. So <laughs> right, I'm telling you. So, um, I am super excited to be here and to speak with you. So glad that you invited me here. Um, I used to be one of the people that hated their job. Like I, I felt stuck. And uh, it wasn't until I started sharing my story and I landed my job at Mercedes Benz and I made $100,000 and moved across the country that... Um, okay, you don't get to make reference to that $100,000 because I have I'm yet sorry. to do that, so you don't get to make but, reference. But we're going to talk about that today. We See, this is what we need to talk about because a lot of people, we don't talk about it, right? This is true. And that's why... You don't need to make that money, right? So um, I'm just here. I'm a career nerd, right? Just bonafide. <laughs> what is a career nerd? nerd? I love all things career. So I love resumes and interviewing. Oh yeah, you are nerd because yes. I hate those things. I hate. The, I've become to. I've come to loathe the word resume. Uh, it's it's like the best thing. It's like the best piece of paper. Like it's more important than your degree, right? Because like nobody asks to look at your degree. They ask to see your resume, and it this should make true. you money. So I call it profitable resumes. Like, a resume to make you money, I'm all about it. See, I, I've learned, and, okay, in the short time that I know Ashley, I've learned she has two favorite words, career and money. Right. Those are like her two favorite <laughs> words. All the time. <laughs> and that's just in, in, the, in the less than a month that I've known her. Those right. are her two favorite words. I'm okay with it because, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily like career, but I love the word <laughs> money. So I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Well, see, a lot of times people are scared to say the word money. They're scared to talk about it um, because maybe they haven't. They're not, they know they're not making the money they deserve. Or they have student loans, and money is a topic, but nobody wants to talk about it. It's like this little secret that we're just going to ignore. This is true. But if we don't talk about it, how can we fix it? How can we get excited about it? How can we learn to make more of it? So I'm all about money, and I talk about it because that's what people respond to. But actually, when I say money, I really do mean quality of life. I find that when people... Um, make more money, have better work-life balance, they have a better quality of life. So whether that means they can vacation, they can buy their dream home, an investment property, put their kids in private school. Like Everybody has different dreams and goals. And money and quality of life it all goes together in terms of your career. 
So that's how I talk about it. But most people don't say quality of life. They say, I need more money. So that's where I go. <laughs> they say, how do I get more money? So that's where I start. Well, that's that speaking that language thing. You have to be able to speak the language. Exactly. All right. So let's, let's jump in. So tell me about where you were. When all this started, like headspace wise, you hated your job. What were you doing? Things of that magnitude. So it's happened several times, to be perfectly honest. Good God. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm going to ask this. <laughs> and don't give me that look. Because okay. I, I know, don't give me that look. How old are you? I am 32. That's it? That's it. Oh, this ought to be a short story. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Carry on. Okay, this, this... so I'll talk about the first time, and then we'll go from there. The okay. first time, um, I actually didn't hate my job, I couldn't find a job. So I was, a, I graduated, you know, with the university, whoop, whoop, go Eagles. Um, <laughs> I graduated from the university and um, they say, you know, go to school, go to college, get a good education. Got that. That's done, mm -hmm. right? Then they say, make sure you have internships, right? Mm -hmm. so, you have, so I had three. I worked for Hanes. I worked for Continental Tire. I had some pretty big names. Yeah, but I said this when you said Hanes. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. T-shirt underwear company, Winston-Salem. That was a wonderful experience. Um, so I had a, some, I had a, have your resume looked at by Career Services. Me and career services were on lock, right? So I did all these things that they told me to do. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't find a job. Like, I was interviewing. Um, I was, like, at minimum three months, just, like, jobless. Like, no one would touch me with a 10-foot pole. So what year did you graduate? 2007. <laughs> Good God. Okay, carry yes. on. 2007. So into 2008, no one would hire me, even though I had everything. I knew how to interview. I had a great resume. Um, I had corporate experience I was looking for jobs on major I couldn't get hired for a part-time job because they said I was overqualified yep that's the running line I, right? that, I hate that word <laughs> I hate that word like I like that word but we'll talk about that a little bit later why you know what it's all this vice versa we do it is too early in the day for that carry on <laughs> um I couldn't and I couldn't find a job so long story short I call my mom basically in tears like sobbing because I thought I had to move back home because I was living I in Charlotte North Carolina at the time um, but I grew up in Jackson, South Carolina, so, like, I grew up on a dirt road. Oh, good God. You just want Jackson where you you had the pass to get to Augusta? Yes. Oh, good. Are you serious? Yes. I hate that place. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I love the people there. But just for me, it's not What is your population? 200? I have no idea. But I wouldn't try to Oh, my back. God. It's the worst place ever. It's, it's like this little speck. Because I have to go there when I go home to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I have to pass through Jackson. I'm just like... And you can't speed because there's this little strip, and the police sit right in the middle of that strip. And, and I'm just okay. down there. <laughs> I hate that power plant too. Okay, so, carry on. Um, but that's where I'm from. So, um, and for people, some people love it. Like they love the country living, and that's fine. It just wasn't for me. And I thought I had to go back home, so I called my mom in tears, and she was like, "Hey, Ashley, don't." I ran out of money too because I told you to save money, like emergency <laughs> fund. I had an emergency fund, but I was tapped out. Like, you oh, you were really at the, the lowest of the low at that point. Yeah. So mentally, I was just exhausted. I was strained. I was sad. I was embarrassed. Because you call your mom with a degree, you know, you have experience and you can't find a job. No what's, your degree? What was your degree? what's your degree in? Um, my first one is a business administration with a concentration in marketing. Okay. So um, I called her. She said, just wait. She was like, I'll give you 30 days. She was like, I'll give you 30 more days. If you can't find a job, we'll figure it out. But I was like, I've been doing this for months. So <laughs> <laughs> what is 30 days going to do? But um, I had to real I realized that I had to do everything differently. Like if I only had thirty days, okay, not to go back to Jackson, South Carolina, we had to figure out life, <laughs> right? Yeah. So during that thirty days, there was a lot of soul searching, a lot of crying out to God, <laughs> a lot of prayers lot of went prayers, up, a lot of prayers, a lot of sobbing, a lot of anger. Um, so where are you at this time? Where are you staying? Or do you I have was, you an apartment? Or I you was in an apartment in Charlotte, North Carolina, by myself. So I was in a one bedroom apartment. Okay. Staying there, and uh, they were like, "So you know, your rent is due." <laughs> that you know that's where I was going. Around. I was like, "Okay, so did you have a roommate that was helping to foot the bill?" I was fully funded by my emergency fund. So when they, so you need so this is not career, this is finance. You need to have an emergency fund. That was the last thing I did after, um, before college. Um, I saved, so I had like money stacked. So okay, I was well, living for a minute, and then you hit that like the end. You're like eating ramen noodles. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's when you know it's gotten bad. When you're eating right. Roman noodles, Roman it's bad. Noodles and drinking water, you know. <laughs> um, I had, like, money for, like, gas, but, you know, to, for interviews, but, like, we weren't going out. Um, I actually wasn't in a very positive space. Um, I actually lost a couple friends because I didn't have any money to go out. I couldn't go out to eat. I couldn't. Oh, because you just finished mm -hmm. school, so now it's like everybody's out doing stuff, jobs, yeah. and, ooh. So I, I didn't, and I didn't want to be around anyone. Financially, I couldn't. 
like, like we'll foot the bill, but there's only so many times for yeah, you know, it gets that, old. Yeah, it gets old, and um, I just and I didn't want to go out, right? Because I was embarrassed, I was ashamed. I was like, I got a degree. I did everything they told me to do, and I still am stuck in this space where they told me I wouldn't be because I went to college. Mm-hmm. So that was the basis of actually everything that I teach today. It's like from that moment. Because I was like, this will never happen to me again mm. in life, ever. So that's where all of the, I guess, stuff happened in terms of resumes and interviews and salaries and things like that. Because I didn't know, not the right way. I knew what they taught us in school. I know what you know our professors told. Uh, you know, made a check mark when you turned the resume in as an assignment. But how does that really work? You know, how do you get hired? And then I started realizing that I was talking to people that didn't have to look for a job which is totally different. You're getting advice from people, um, but they don't have to look for a job. They can't really help you the way you need to be helped. Especially if, if time has passed. Like, if you've been, and I use HR, a lot of them get in those positions, they've been there for years, and yeah, I know you're seeing everybody every day, but you're not the person on the other side anymore. Right. So, you, you know, and years have passed, so now the dynamic looks different. And you've adjusted, but you've been mm-hmm. on the other side, so you've adjusted from the other side. So, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. So the sense of urgency is different. Mm -hmm. Um, And then in the midst of, you know, the time, social media is shifting. Mm. Uh, You know, Facebook came in, like, 2005-ish. It was earlier than that because I graduated from, no, I got to Coastal in 2006. It was starting to take off. So, yeah, 2005, 2006-ish. So then that changed the landscape of jobs because, like, you have LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. So then people, like, doing Google searches and seeing party pics, you know, pop up. That wasn't something that people historically had to deal with. So they're doing... Um, Could you not knock over the social I'm studio, please? Could you not knock over... Oh, my God. They saw that on sorry. camera, too. They did see... I'm a gesturer, so I'm sorry, guys. But um, <laughs> but uh, it changed the landscape. So what we used to do doesn't work anymore. They said, oh, just go to pinch resumes and knock on the door. Yeah. Knock on what door? Exactly. Talk to person. So everything is online. So it was just uh, like all of the... All the stars align in the wrong way, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, when I was looking for a position, so it was just I just had to learn to do something different, and that's what I had to do. So that's really um, what I teach my clients now because I remember, like I made, I like re- like yesterday I could close my eyes and go back to that place, and a lot of my people they're at that place except maybe they're not unemployed they're employed but they still feel embarrassed they still feel ashamed. They still feel stuck. My people always say, I feel stuck. I hate my job. It happens so fast. Like you. It does. It happens so fast. It really does. All right, so while that was going on, so we're in the 30 days. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to get into a lot because we get ready to take our first break. Okay. So uh, in the beginning, all right, so she gave you 30 days. So what did you do immediately outside of the prayer and, and, and fasting? Because, you know, <laughs> we try to get God's attention with the fasting. Um, I tore everything apart. So I looked at my resume first. And I just kind of just looked at him like this is. I just kind of. I just did. I just went to supreme research mode, right? And I just tore it apart and rebuilt it from scratch, right? Uh, no template. Just this is what I think should be on there based on the skills, right? I did research for jobs that um, I was interested in, um, companies that I was. I actually wanted to work at. Part of the problem was I was applying for jobs just to have a job, and they oh. could sense that in the interview. Um, so I started there in terms of resumes, and then, of course, lots of research for interviewing. I wanted to know every interview question they could ask me possible and have answers prepared for those. So was it just a Google search and use, like, interview questions? Google search, asking people that I knew um, that were already working, um, sorority sisters that were already in the job market, um, people who were in HR, asking if they could help. Like, I was humbled <laughs> right? in a way that I hadn't been humbled before because um, I'm, like, asking for help, super independent, Got this, gone walk, you know, and I had to ask for help from everybody, not just one person, everybody, and not just one time, like repeatedly. <laughs> All right, so we go slide out on break, but before we do, tell everybody what sorority you were a part of. I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rho sorority. <laughs> I only let her do that because we found out my aunt Carolyn Gordon is a founder of her chapter. Yeah. So that was an enlightening fact. But everybody, stick around. We'll be back more with Ashley Dash on the Leadership Land with their host Ricardo D. Rice. All right. So during the break, mm-hmm. everybody gets little nuggets on Facebook Live and YouTube. So hey, Facebook Live and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so tell us something we wouldn't know. Something you wouldn't know. About you. I was born in England. Really? Yes. Outside of London. So how long have you been here? Since I was like three, six months. But I was actually born in England. Military brat. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm about to say, did that just randomly happen? You, you asked me some, something random. Uh, that, is, that, that was random. Like, I did not expect that. I'm like, ah, that was, okay. You, yes. you definitely take the cake on that one. Mm -hmm. So you don't know anything about England because you wasn't there. No, I wasn't there. Um, I've been trying to get back. But every time I try to get back, something crazy happens. Um, <laughs> so it's on the to-do list in, like, the next two years to go back to London. Check it out. I'm going to go with my mom so she can show me, like, you know, what she, I know it's not the same, definitely. I was, yeah, but sure uh, definitely show me around, yeah. see the Air Force Base is still there, hospitals and things like that, so. Wow, okay, you went on that one. I did not, that, you went on that one. I was not, but I can see, I can, I can, I would, <laughs> that's not out without my scope. Outside of my scope, I could right. I could see that like you you were primp and proper. Yes. So I, I could I could see you sipping high tea. My mom at noon. tried to get me to move as soon as possible because she didn't want me to have like the British accent, which I think is horrible. Ah uh, yeah, especially now people love accents. That I would have been amazing. It. So now I sound like a valley girl instead because moved to California. <laughs> okay, that there yes. there we go. How long did y'all stay? Did you stay in California? Um, I want to say it took maybe six or so. Not that long, a couple years. Bouncing around. So that was part of the bouncing around thing when you was like, you live, oh. Well, I bounced around with my mom in the military, but then I actually bounced around personally, like as an adult, back to California as an adult for, for relocations, for jobs and different things. Oh, okay. So she wins the award <laughs> for the biggest surprise because I didn't see that. All right, we're going back. <clears throat> All right, we're back on this week's edition of the Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice, and my very special guest, Ashley Dash. And when we left on the break, again, she's talking about careers and how to get that dream career and things of that magnitude on today. So when we left, she was talking about she had just graduated from college, and she did everything right, and everything went wrong because she couldn't find what she needed to find to be successful in a job. So when we left, you were saying your mom would give you, you called home to Jackson. Oh, God, Jackson. <laughs> and your mom said she was giving you guys 30 days to figure it out. So start from there again. So 30 days to figure it out. And I had to speed, like, speed this up. Like, I had to get to work. So I started with my resume, went back to career services, some different people, started asking questions, and started asking people who are currently in the job market. Like, not the people who had a job for 15 years or 10 years or even three years. Um, somebody who's recently been hired, what does their resume look like? That's a good plan. <laughs> what did they do to get hired, you know? <laughs> so that was number one. Number two, of course, super duper, lots of research on um, Google for interviewing questions, learning how to interview, because there's actually format for interviewing that I was not aware. I didn't either. I'm not either. That's really? There, so there's a new style of interviewing called the, it's not new anymore. It's, it's common knowledge now, but it's called behavioral-based interviewing. Right, hmm. and that's when they ask you, "Tell me about a time when you oh god, describe that crap. When you right." There's actually a methodology. It's not mine. It's called the Star Methodology, and it's when you follow the when you follow the plan, the star, um, you answer the question in totality, um, without losing focus, going crazy, going off <laughs> a tangent. You know, um, talking about deers. They ask me about birds. <laughs> you know what I mean? As I tear up his. Uh, Thing again. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna, on the break, you moving. On, you're moving on the break. Like, we're going to slide it over because you are determined. I can't pay for anything in here, so you're not about to tear up stuff. C got you. We're, we're cool. Because yeah. I'm not trying to pay for it either. We're, so. we're not pay, I can't pay for stuff in here. We're all one. Um, so. Do you know what STAR stands for? Mm -hmm. What is it? What stands a for? A situation, task, action, result. Right? So when you answer a question, um, you have to describe the situation. Right? So the interviewer doesn't have any context. So you give them context. You describe the situation. Right? <clears throat> then you describe the task. So what did you actually do? Not as a team, but you as a person. What did you do to fix the problem that you're describing, right? Um, no, excuse me, what, what the task that you, your, excuse me, your manager asked you to do. So like when you're say, hey, I need you to go run on a board, right? You have to describe what you were asked to do. The action is the act, what you actually did, right? So I run on the board using a blue marker, and I improved efficiency by 50% because people from the back of the classroom could see it. Right? Hmm. So that's the action. And the result is that last piece. It's like, okay, what was the benefit of what you did? Hmm. Right? So the result. So I increased productivity. I increased sales. I, you know, had a, man, a meeting with the executive. Wait, so these, this is applied to like 
everyday questions, so like with that example? I, yes. Really? Like every single one. Oh. So I use that methodology. Once I learned it, then I used it so that no matter what question they asked me, I had an example. So I have paid, I had pages and pages of like just notes of like how to answer certain interview questions using the STAR methodology. Hmm. Okay. So um, that was what I did. And then I started networking. I started hitting people up like, look, I see this open position at your organization. <laughs> like, what's up, right? <laughs> right does, does, did this predate LinkedIn? Was that one of the things? Or this predates LinkedIn? I don't know if I was using LinkedIn at that time. Because I think LinkedIn is a little newer. It is newer. Um, I was not using LinkedIn. So you're doing what, like Facebook, Job emails? Boards. Oh, okay. Job well, wait, who are you contacting? The people who were the... Uh, Oh, for networking? Yeah. I was talking to friends. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. like, I know, like, you worked at, so let's say you have your own radio show. And you and I were <laughs> friends, right? <laughs> then I would say, hey, uh, I saw there's an open position at your radio station. It may not be your show, but it might be another one. Can you get me in contact with? Do you know okay. X, Y, Z? I okay. would just start into, you know, asking questions um, to see if I get some help. So that's what I was doing for, like, those and of course, I was spamming. I call it my resume across the world. <laughs> Just be an all. I don't advise that, but that's what I was doing. To be completely honest. Actually, that's that's the running theme. So apparently, because when Keith was on here, he was talking about networking. He was saying people go to these network events and start handing out a thousand business cards, and that's mm-hmm. their goal is to hand out a thousand business cards. And he was like, "You don't do that. You kind of survey the room and you make the relationships work. The ones you actually do meet." You know, take the time to expound upon those particular meetings, not trying to spray your card right. all over the room. So I guess it's the same ideology with resume. Same exact ideology. I was just like, who, whoever wanted it, whatever was open, they got it, right? Um, should not do that. Definitely do not recommend doing that. Um, you should have your resume, like he said, um, in the right places, right? Um, you got to be very direct and strategic, and you have to know where to go, right? So what... But, but, but I didn't know. So I was just like, by any means necessary at that time. Mm. So I was, you know, I was ready to work. So through all that process and learning and asking questions and humbling, right? <laughs> so <laughs> was that word humbling? It'll bring, it'll bring you down. And a lot. And uh, But by the end of the 30 days, I have secured a position. Now, it wasn't full time. I had secured another internship. But the internship gave me a three-month extension for me to land the job I actually got. It was paid? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I only do, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you purchase your lips. I already know I this is not going to end well. I do paid internships, right? But the first internship, I would tell people, um, do your first internship for free, right? Mm. Um, but do it during the semester. So that way you can get a paid internship the following semester because you already have experience. But don't do multiple free internships unless it's like legit like if Obama called it's free <laughs> right I, I don't care right for his new foundation Chicago yes. okay uh, yeah we, we, we with it we with it we absolutely with it all right so let's fast forward mm-hmm. to the Mercedes Benz mm-hmm. how do we get there everybody hates this when I say this I apply that is not the that is what happened okay now I'm gonna say why everybody hates this because it's a simple answer. They think they're this big, giant story. And there is a little bit of a story. But I find that most of my clients, previous, before they work with me, right, they're, they're scared. They're, they're fearful. They feel stuck. So they don't do anything. So they don't apply for jobs. <laughs> really? So the first step is actually to take action. Yeah, you have to actually take action. Now, once I applied, and they said yes, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting them to respond um, as quickly. Um, that's when, like, the work happened. That's when basically I did the same thing that I did all those years ago. I got to work. I researched. I found the people. You know, I found out that the potential person hiring, hiring me was a, um, he was a Kappa. Oh, I, well, see, that's, that's already. I had stalked, but I had stalked his LinkedIn. So I was doing research. I was doing due diligence. So when I walked in, I, to be honest, that tidbit never came up during conversation. But it was in my back pocket. <laughs> She's had, like, yeah, so. Just in case, you know. <laughs> So I did research and. Uh, so wait, was Mercedes Benz, was it one of those situations where it just came across your radar, or it was a place you said I want to work at Mercedes Benz? It was, <clears throat> it was a combination of two things, right? 
So it was time for me to move from my from, from my position. I was a recruiter, so I actually um, was doing talent acquisition and recruiting. So um, I'm the person that's rejected people before. So the little emails you guys get, like, sorry, <laughs> but the person that <laughs> okay, we fill this position, and you know we yeah. have to yeah. So I know what that feels like on both sides. Mm, okay, that's a good thing. So um, I was in that role, but I was in there almost two years, and it was time for me to grow. My mentor told me that um, in order to be successful, his recommendation is that I should be changing jobs every 18 to 24 months. Really? That's what he told me. And I was like, well, he's the he's the high up. He's my mentor. I'm going to listen. So it was time for a new job. So um, he also told me that you need skills that are important to the company, not that you actually like. Right? That's true. So um, I did some research. As you always hear, I'm always researching, right? Yeah, um, that's, that's your favorite word, but that's mine too, so I'm with it. So research, and I found out that compliance was a really big deal in HR. Didn't know it was like a thing, to be honest. Just knew that it was like the new buzzword for HR. Hmm. Okay? And that's what the position was at Mercedes. It was an HR compliance position. So I applied. It was a. It, it was also a temporary role. It was like a full-time project assignment, so it was like two years. But after two years, you have to like rotate out. Oh. And I was like, well... I'll, I'll apply for it and see what happens. Um, didn't expect to get it because I didn't have a background in compliance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like I can learn transferable skills and you know all that stuff. And uh, I applied and they said yes. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> what do I do now? Right? And then you had to move because that at that time I was still in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, well, actually I was in Fort Mill, South Carolina, but it's right outside Charlotte. Yeah. Um, then I moved... I had to move to New Jersey. Ooh. Montville, New Jersey. No, I, I, I don't know much about New Jersey. New Jersey, New York, I love. New Jersey is like one of those sidebars. No, not knocking it, but it, it's just like one of those sidebars. People go, oh, I live in New York. Yay! And then people go, I live in New Jersey. I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, it was like 45 minutes. I don't, even, I don't even know if it's 45 minutes, but it was in a commuting distance to the NYC. So, mm-hmm. like, you could get there, like, take a train and be there, like, in less than an hour or so. Okay, well, then that's cool. As long as you were close to New York. Yeah, I was good. on the we're state good. line. I was on the line. Basically. Okay, then we're good. As long as you were close to New York, we're good. So, uh, I had to move. And I had never done that. So, that was a new uh, experience in terms of trying to figure out life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in careers. But I'm sure they gave you a relocating package, right? They did give me a reload. Um, that was a conversation that we had to have. Uh, in terms of negotiating, because some things, some of the numbers didn't quite work with what I thought would work. <laughs> so um, they couldn't do what uh, I wanted, but we came to like a compromise, like a happy compromise is what I call it. So I was excited. I was down for the cause. Um, and I said yes. All right. So let's, let's cause we can, we're going to take another break. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So you start the job. What does that look like? What does that landscape look like? So you get the expense account, you get the travel. Like, what did that look like? Um, I did get an expense account, but not immediately. So you get a corporate credit card um, or you do your stuff. Um, I think I did travel almost immediately. Um, I went to, I think my first, no, my first day on the job was actually in Michigan as opposed to New Jersey because that's where there was a training session there. So my first uh, day, <laughs> I had no. to actually be a different location. I think shortly thereafter, I had to go to Germany for a compliance meeting. So international travel, and then trying to navigate that. Um, it's only brown face, I know, different. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm about to, right. That's a given. I I yeah. already figured that. That's a given. So, but really cool company, really cool cars, uh, really cool people. It was just, I don't know. I felt like I had gotten to the secret society. Ah, <laughs> uh, you did. It was Mercedes Benz. You did get to the secret society. Let me confirm that for you. You did. So you did that for two years. Um, a little more than two years, actually. Because uh, actually, um, when the permanent position, well, they made the position permanent. Oh, so um, nice. I didn't leave. I didn't have to leave. They, they liked me enough. They got me. To, so I stayed and I actually transitioned to an HR generalist role where I was doing more career stuff, like more like employee engagement things that I actually do right now. Oh, so how long did you stay with Mercedes Benz? Uh, four, was it three or four years? Cause, see, I moved again to Mercedes-Benz Research and Development. But that's in California. That's actually like a separate arm of Mercedes. So it's like the the cars you see in the future. So like the cars that, you know, 20 years from now, they're already working on right now. That's what they do in California. Oh, nice. All right. So we're going to take our next break. We come back. Then we're going to start getting to the meat and potatoes about how to find that career. We just want to get that out of the way. So stick around on Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. All right.
gonna yeah, I'm gonna need you to move that because if you break that, it's on you and Love 860 AM, and I'm not about to deal with Andrew about that. So that's that's. I think got it though. See, look at that. Oh, good lord! So you turn it sideways. Yes. All right, so because we probably won't go into this when we get back because we need to go mm -hmm. straight into the the important stuff. Okay. Um, tell us and, and us about <laughs> us about uh after Mercedes Benz. What happened after Mercedes Benz? At the Mercedes Benz, um, I have been doing this on the side um, for a number of years. I started as a resume writer. Mercedes got a really cool mentor, got trained as a, actually a certified career job coach. By who? Um, it's the, by Rick Nadell. He has a training program oh. um, that my mentor went through and she recommended. Got trained for job transition, so outside the organization and job development, so up the organization. So I can help you go in or up. Oh, right. Um, have been doing that. It's been working. I had been testing things. Uh, had a person contact me, um, my current blueprint that I have. Uh, we tested it with him. He was like my first case test case study with all the stuff I had like put together in this step by step process. Huh. And he got a um, hundred thousand dollar job offer in thirty days. Seriously? Yeah. So that had happened while I was at Mercedes. So then after when I left, well, I went straight into what I do now, which is career coaching, career branding. Nice. Yeah. So anybody can enter this program? The one that you went into? Um, yes, I don't think there's any, I don't remember any qualification because it's like a certification program. How much was it? Um, I don't know the company paid. That means it was a lot. I don't think, I think it, I don't think it was that much. I think it was actually under a thousand dollars, under 1500 at least. Um, it wasn't expensive as compared to some of the other programs that started like five thousand, you know, two thousand, yeah, three thousand dollars. Um, but I was a lot of uh, there was very few people. All right, everybody, we are back on this week's edition of the Leadership Blend with your host Ricardo D. Rice and my special guest Ashley Dash. All right, so the first two segments, I want to get her credentials out of the way. So we've done that. So now we're getting into the meat and potatoes. So yes. tell me, if I was a client coming to you, how would this look? How would this work? Like, what what, is, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, so I do a couple things, right? First of all, I don't accept all clients because I can't help all people, okay? Um, I feel like people who say that, they lie. <laughs> <laughs> Point simple, right? So what normally happens is that you would apply to work with me. Oh, excuse me. Right? All right. So you fill out an application. I'll take a look at your answers. Based on your answers, we have a conversation. If I think I can help you, um, then we talk about what that could look like. Um, and if I can't help you, then I'll, I will send you to someone else so I know who can. Because I have an arsenal of other career people. I'm mine. sure. Uh, I, so, I, I would have guessed that. So I send you to who you need. Because if you hate your job, you feel stuck, you pay money, right? And then you don't get the result. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in a worse space than when you started. True. And that's not how I roll. So, um... Then we work one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Um, I have a career branding blueprint. And what it is is a step-by-step -step process. And we just go through this process. And it's a two-month program. Um, some people opt to do it one-on-one. -on -one, so they have like we have like a two-day VIP boot camp <laughs> where we're just like, look, you can't talk to your wife, your husband, your kids. Oh, good right? Lord. Right? It's and one just, of those. It's, right. it's one of those serious things. Right. Because um, you got to get it all in. It's a lot of information. Mm. Um, and then we go through the process. And you... Tell me what you want. And I was like, okay, how are we going to get there? And my job is to do so without judgment, right, and to be a safe space. So a lot of people say they want to be astronaut. My job not say you can't be astronaut. My job is, okay, you want to be astronaut. How are we going to get there? Do you got to go to school? Do you have a background? You know, it's by NASA. Like, that's, <laughs> like this, is how we, this is how we operate. Um, so I ask a lot of questions. It's, I have to be honest. Um, I tell all people, if you're sensitive, it's probably not the right program for you. Because um, it can feel like an interrogation sometimes. Because mm -hmm. I'm asking you question after question because I need data. I need this information to figure out, okay, how, how are we going to make this work? How are we going to figure out if this is what you really want? Can we do it? Right? We have to have realistic conversations. Talk about money. Right? Um, all of my private clients, they get a, like a 12-page report on their compensation based on education, background, and skills. Are you getting paid your worth? Are you not getting paid your worth? Why? Right? Like, we go... I go in. Like, this is not... Like, I believe that. Like, I, I, I absolutely believe that. She's, she's extremely thorough, so I absolutely believe that. Yeah. All right, so for the average Joe... Mm -hmm. Actually, let's go, let's go here. Okay. What are a lot of the mistakes that you see the average Joe, the everyday person who ends up getting stuck, make? 
when it comes to trying to get out of this hole? What are some of the mistakes they make? Um, they don't know what they don't know, <clears throat> right? And, like, if you're not getting called back for an interview, that means there's something's wrong with your resume. But they don't think that. They just think that it wasn't the right job. So you keep doing the same thing over and over again with the same results. And then they get further and further behind because people experience what I call job fatigue, right? So that's when, like, there's a certain l- level of effort that you have to take on to apply for jobs. you got to apply. Oh, to God. You try to follow min- up. Yeah. And- so after doing that for so long, you're going to hit a wall. And that's job fatigue. So people get frustrated. They get depressed. Like, a lot of things happen from jobs that no people, nobody really thinks about. There's an emotional aspect that a lot of career coaches, a lot of other people do not, you know, take into account. And I start at the emotional space. How are you feeling? How many jobs have you applied for? How did that make you feel, right? If you've been applying for 100 jobs. you got one interview. We're going to have to have some decompressed time before we can talk about resumes and cover letters because you've been doing that the last three months. So is that an actual problem? Because, uh, you know, they tell you it's kind of like keep throwing stuff at a wall until something mm-hmm. sticks. So is that a problem? You sh- That is a problem because it leads them to applying for jobs they really don't like. Uh, makes them decrease their self-esteem, which means they don't apply for jobs they're actually qualified for. They keep lowering the bar for themselves, which compounds the fact that they're not getting paid what they deserve. Like, there's a lot of things that happen um, when you don't address the emotional component of the job searching and career process. So what is so what does that headspace that headspace look like? So I've been I've applied. Let's say I've applied for a hundred jobs mm-hmm. and I've had two interviews, and that. Cause, this gets so murky because mm-hmm. people will tell you to keep applying until something opens. So when do you stop and say, okay, maybe there is a problem with my resume? If I apply for 50 jobs and I get two interviews, or if I apply for 30 jobs, I get five. Like what? And I know there's no standard way, but right. when should you legitimately stop and say, okay, it might be my resume? I recommend like a 25%, like one to four ratio. So every approximate, no, this is not exact, right? So but a, for every like four jobs you apply for, you should be getting you hear back like one time, right? Okay. So if I apply for four jobs, I should get something back one time, whether that's a phone screen, may not be like a full-fledged interview, but someone, somebody in person contacted me, not some random email that goes into cyberspace. Yeah, yeah. Right? We hate those. Um, right. I call it a black hole of death. Because <laughs> that's what it feels that's, like. That's a bit dramatic, but okay, that's a bit dramatic, but okay. It's not dramatic when you need a job. Well, it's not dramatic too. when you need some more money. That's and you're already too. in that negative headspace, it does feel like a black hole of death. Mm. So, but, um, so I say a four to one ratio. So for every four jobs, you should be hearing back at least one time. Not exact, but that's a good baseline to go by. Okay. So that's a high number. That's a, that's a, so is that for only applying for jobs you know you're qualified for or just in general? Um, I would say for jobs you know you're qualified for, but then that leads us to the question that most people don't know what they're qualified for. Yeah. That, that kind of runs. Right. Yeah. Cause like. You read a job description and then you think you're qualified, mm-hmm. um, but then maybe you're not. Maybe because job description isn't as thorough as it should be, or it's maybe too thorough, and they're getting a whole bunch of things. Um, and then there's a gender breakdown, right? Because men um, think of themselves more highly than they actually are, and then women think of themselves lo- more lowly than they actually are. So then they, we get to a separate another <laughs> conversation. All right, actually, I'm gonna segue on that. Mm-hmm. All right, so I was at the Small Business Expo this week, and mm-hmm. a lot of the speakers who were mostly male uh, mm-hmm. made the comment that there are very few women speakers that hit that kind of stage. Do you think that's what that is? Do you think that feeds into it? Uh, definitely. Um, I think it's a combination of things, but I think that um, as women, sometimes we don't, a lot of times we don't apply for the positions that, because we don't think we have the right skills. We don't think we're qualified enough. We need to get X, Y, Z before we can apply, right? So that's something my mentor, who my, men, my two mentors were male, they had to help me work through. They're like, actually apply for the job, see what happens. I'm like, but, but. They're like, don't worry about that. Apply. <laughs> right? <laughs> if they say no, no big deal. <laughs> like, that's how they thought about it. And I was like, okay. So then that's what I started doing. And then it started working because I started getting hired. I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think other women have that problem? Oh, yeah. I talk to women all the time. I'm like, why didn't you apply? Because they have like seven qualifications, they, but there's like ten. But the, the They didn't have the three. The three prevented them from applying. The three qualifications they say they didn't have, right? A guy could have, like, two, five, five (laughs) of ten, or, like, four of ten. Okay, well, maybe two. We'll we'll go. And then they'll have the conversation, right? Mm. So, um, definitely. And then people are grateful. And I hate to say it this way, but um, 
But sometimes people are just so grateful that they don't ask for more. They don't expect more. They're just grateful to be working. They're just grateful to have a job. They're just grateful to be able to pay the bill. They're not even thinking about future or more or expansion. They're just excited for what the little bit they really do get, not realizing that it's not what they actually deserve. So do we, okay, with, with that being said, do we get into levels? Because there are confidence levels. Mm -hmm. Should there be a certain level of confidence you have when you're hired and you realize, okay, well, now I'm hired, but I realize I'm being lowballed. Do you need a certain level of confidence to say, okay, I thank you for this position, mm -hmm. but we need to negotiate? Yes. My very first job, I did not negotiate. That was the Jackson, you know, not go back to Jackson, South Carolina <laughs> job. Like they called I'm just me. glad to be here. I'm just right. glad to be here. That was the grateful mindset, right? Mm. Um, I call it over grateful because you should always be grateful. But, you know, the over grateful. Um, I negotiate. They said, here's your number. I said it was more money I made in my life. I was like, sign me up. I will be there. <laughs> you know, send me the, the drug screen. I'll take the test. Do whatever. I'll show up, right? Mm. Uh, so, but my second position, I did research. I had more. Mm. I went to my MBA program. I had some, some HR colleagues. Okay, she, you know them MBA, them MBA programs don't play. They, right. They get you right. Um, so I had a lo lo level of confidence. I had some experience this time. I knew a little bit more. So that second position, I didn't negotiate. Okay. So the, we're back to the research thing. Mm -hmm. So again, more mistakes than average Joe's, the people, everyday people make outside of that. Okay, they don't research, right? They don't research at all. Um, they apply for positions that are beneath them, right? Mm. Um, and nobody wants to say that because, like, we're all supposed to be, like, you know, humble. No, you went to school, you should, there's a certain job you should have. Like, you shouldn't have to work at McDonald's unless you want to mm -hmm. in a management training program. Right? Ah, exactly. Right? So there's a difference. Um, they suck at interviewing. They do really, really bad at interviewing. Like, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. um, they don't negotiate. Um, they don't leave when it's time to leave. They don't see the writing on the wall. Well, they see the writing on the wall, but they ignore it. So mm -hmm. they stay stuck in positions past their due date, so they don't leave on time. So, um, like I said, every 18, 24 months is what my mentor told me. And that if you look at my resume and my career, it kind of looks like that every two years. Even if I wasn't changing um, jobs, I mean, companies, I was changing positions or moving to a different role or doing a different project so that it looked, you could see the progression of my career. Um, there's so many things. This sounds horrible, but you, there's so many things you can do wrong when you don't know. Yeah, and that's Because you weren't taught, like, we weren't taught this. They tell you to go to career services, they don't tell you the whole kit. Well, they don't network. Mm. So um, they don't network in a timely way, or they weren't taught how to network. Like, I hate the word networking. I say relationship building. They don't build relationships and leverage them for long term. Um, like, I've gotten LinkedIn messages where people spam everybody in LinkedIn profile say, I need a job. That's not how you network. <laughs> right? Networking is you make a phone call. To the crowd, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Been great. Let's go to lunch. You go to lunch, you get a radio show. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's what networking. First, I just want to say that's not how this happened. Not I, not I, I, didn't, I didn't pick up the phone and call Greg. Like, hey, Greg, you know, let's have lunch. And, hey, so I want a radio show. No. Uh, you know, that, that, but that's. We met at a networking bit and we just built a natural relationship. It wasn't like a, a forced thing. It was, yeah, it I didn't even right. know you had a radio. We were just talking. No, nobody ever knows that in the room. Everybody yeah. thinks I'm just there because I work there. And then when I take off the name tag, I'm like, okay, so I have a radio show. All the eyes change in the room. It's, it's a funny thing. But it's I had chatted with you before, so I thought you were cool initially, right? So, well, you know that, and I'm smart, and, and I'm good-looking. So let's, let's, let's throw that out there. I'm smart, and I'm good-looking. So, you know, those things work, too, as well. They, they do work very well. They work as well. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to get into a lot because we're getting ready to go to break. Actually, let's go ahead and take the break because when we get back, we're going to get into the final pieces of this puzzle, like what you can do to get to where you want to be. So stick around on Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. Okay, uh, there was something else I'm going to ask you when we were segwaying into that. Uh, when you're talking to a client, mm -hmm. where is a good space for them to be? Like, a good transitioning spot. There's not a good space for them to be because I vet them before I work with them. So they're going to be at different places depending on who they are. What makes it easier for you? Let's say that. What, what are some things that people could have already done that make it easier for you? Nothing. They just got to listen to me. <laughs> Like, to be honest, because um, they just have to, okay, they have to be willing to listen, but I don't, but I can tell people who are willing to listen and do the work. Like, you, can, mm. like you, can't, you have to listen and then take action, mm. right? So, if I tell you, go on, and it can, and I, sometimes I do say, I say things that to them seems crazy, like, don't apply for another job. They're like, what? Because it's counterintuitive. 
But I'm, I have a reason for I have oh, yeah, a reason to your madness. Yeah, yeah. So if they don't listen to the simple things, then I can't trust them on the bigger things. Because this is just don't apply for a job today. It's very simple. Like I don't care what you feel. I don't care what your <laughs> wife says. You know, I'm the expert. Don't apply for a job today, right? Or when I tell you, oh, go apply for this job, not the other job. That's not what I told you to apply for. Apply for this, and let's talk about right. Because certain things I want them to experience, mm. so they can move forward. Right, so I do more exp- experiential learning, where of course I'm telling them, coaching them, but we're actually doing things together. Like we're gonna when I talk about networking, you're gonna actually network when we're networking. We're not gonna, we're just not gonna talk. <laughs> I'm gonna say, hey, go call so and so, go email so and so, right? Because they need to go through the process. They need to see where they get stuck. They need to be like, I don't have a network. Well, let's talk about that, right? Mm. So every person is different, and every and I've done couples, so I've done couples together. That's really, been, that's been really cool. That just seems like it'd be too much. Depends on the couple. This couple was amazing. They were awesome. Well, then again, you can vet them, so you it's not mm-hmm. like you're just taking on an average walk-in Joe who's just... Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody. We're back with our uh, final segment. So in this segment, I'm ambushing Ashley. She doesn't know I'm doing this, but I'm going to do oh, it anyway. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, on this show, I love to give examples. Because I feel like examples help you really serve your purpose and serve the listeners. So, you don't get to vet me today. Okay. You're, you're going to take me as I am. Okay. So, I'm, I'm coming to you. I, I've applied to you. And, and, you know, I am a 24-year-old guy who just graduated from college about two years ago. And I work for uh, Dollar General. But I'm a supervisor. And I've decided that I want to land a job uh, in... Higher education. Uh, I my bachelor's degree is in let's see uh, elementary education. I'm working on my master's in education. Mm-hmm. So I want to become a actually no let's go another route. I want to become a principal of a high school. Okay. Um, I've done some volunteering at some children's centers, some tutoring centers. So I have worked with kids. I just haven't gotten into the system. Mm-hmm. So, what would you do? Uh, <clears throat> the first thing is always clarity. So, you're very clear you want to be a principal, yes. right? Um, however, you can't be a principal straight off, right? So, then yes. I would ask what type of teacher you want to be. Um, so, what teacher you want to be? What grade? Uh, I want to teach sixth grade because okay. I don't like small kids. I need kids who understand what an F is. Okay. So, I don't want small kids. All right. So, sixth grade. Sixth grade, what subject? Yeah, uh, I like government. Government. Have you tutored in government? Yes. Okay. Um, who have you worked with in terms of parents or teachers um, or other, like you were a tutor, who, who was in your network? Uh, well, I've done the YMCA, so I've met a array of, of different types of parents. So I've met the soccer moms, I've met the corporate moms, uh, and I kind of have done some one-on-one with some of their kids. So. so you have a pretty good rapport relationship with them? Yeah. Okay. Are they all in the same school district or a certain school? Uh, they're in the same district, the district same one. District, yeah, okay. District one. Do they have access to the people at district one? Do you know? That I don't know. Would you be willing to ask? I could. You could? I, I could do that. Okay. So that would be the first part in terms of when we start networking. So then I would ask the person to begin the network, networking the natural way. Right? What is the natural way? That is people they already know, people they already have a rapport with. We're not talking to strangers. They tutor their kids. They have a rapport. They trust them because they're with their kids. So this would just be a natural next conversation for them. So I would just, okay, so the people that are in my direct line of view mm-hmm. that I interact with on a day-to-day basis, yeah. I will start networking with them. Naturally, yes. But that's, that's so I, I do multiple heads, you know, <laughs> multiple <laughs> attacks, right? So that would be the first attack, right? The second attack would be, okay, so let's take a look at your resume, right? Um, if you have master's, if you're working on master's, you have bachelor's, then just make sure it's formatted for education because education has a different format than like a business or a federal resume. Really? It does. Every, so every, not all resumes are made equal, mm. right? Um, um, I don't do federal resumes. I have, but it's not my forte. I work on business, mostly business professionals. But education, they require a different format. Um, I work with that as well. But then you would take a look at the, the resume and then we would, brand, I call it branding. So we brand that and put it in the proper places for what he actually wants, for his geographic location, for his sixth grade, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we do it that way. Um, The next plan of attack would be once we get the resume all nice and shiny and make sure that it's approved to my level, right? (laughs) Yeah, the super, the superstar level. Okay, the superstar level. level. Okay. Um, Then we move to branding online. So then we take a look at social media. So I'll Google you what pops up. 
right? We'll see what that looks like. Um, move some things around because you're going to see work to, you said Dollar General? Dollar yeah, General. I'm uh, supervised with Dollar General. So um, Dollar General would probably pop up. So it can pop up. It's fine. That's where you work. But I want them to see education stuff first. So maybe move some volunteer experience and some cool things, you know. So How do you do? So, okay, when you Google yourself, the, whatever pops up, mm -hmm. can you change that kind of stuff? Some things you can, some things you can't. Huh. Um, it just depends on what it is. Um, you can change some email addresses so certain things aren't associated with you. Oh. Um, so there's just different. It depends on what it is. Okay. Um, pictures. So I check for images, and then I also check for content. Okay, I feel like I should Google myself today just to be I mean, and, and then, like, you know, to be honest, um, people have backgrounds. So if you mm -hmm. ever, you know, have a assault or anything on your background, whether it's fel a misdemeanor or a felony, that can pop up. Um, that part you can't change, but you can be prepared to have a conversation about it, mm. right? Um, so then we do the social media stuff, and we do check for that. And then I interrogate them on the interview side because I just assume everybody's a bad interviewer. Mm. Um, makes my life easier. And then we start from scratch. All right, so let's try that. What do you mean? In terms of interviewing? Yes. Oh, so what I actually do is I, give, I have a list of questions. So I would say, hey, you know, 10 out of time you dealt with a difficult teacher. No, difficult student. Okay, so I had this little guy, um, Johnny, and Johnny had behavioral problems. Um, they tried to diagnose him with ADD, didn't happen. He was just a little uh, troubled. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was I started paying a little more attention to Johnny after school was over with. So when his parents came, I was like, you know, they Johnny did blah, 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 because I wanted to see their response. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, they Johnny did blah, 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 and it was kind of a, eh. You know, that's just Johnny. So I was like, okay, well, the parents aren't going to really be a great help, so what's my next plan of action? So I started spending a little more time with Johnny when class was over with, uh, went over the homework with them, uh, just started, uh, asked his parents for permission. So on the weekend, I would pick him up, and we would go do some certain things. Mm -hmm. um, come to find out his father was absent, so it was really just his mother. Um, so I started spending more time with little Johnny, and that was about a month ago, and now his grades have went up, and uh, he's just a better kid. So... Okay, so for me, I I was missing details. So you said that he was probably ADHD, but you weren't sure. You said behavioral problems, but you didn't say what type of behavioral problems that you were experiencing. Actual details, was he biting, was he kicking, like what exactly was happening? Because behavioral could be anything, right? Sure. You said his grades went up by what percent from F to C, from A to B, there's a big difference, right? So when I interrogate people with interviewing, we cover all that. So I actually um, do it myself, and then um, I have also do mock interviews where I have you talk with other people and I listen in and all I do is just take notes like you never hear me say anything it's just like a regular interview and I'm just like taking all the data points how do you can improve what can you do to better um so that would be the next thing we talk about we interviewing the next step of course is what I call passive job searching so my clients know that I don't like to apply for jobs I like for jobs to find me right, all right. I like for <laughs> I like for opportunities okay. to find us right <laughs> and I know it helps my Clients because they you, you feel a certain way when somebody uh, yeah when somebody reaches out to you it's like, like well can you do such and such I'm just like sure it the shower the power shift changes in a positive way for my clients so then we do the process for passive job searching I teach them where they should go what they have to do you know what should it say and what happens um, so then we go through that process then we check back in with networking <laughs> right <laughs> okay to see how you did did you make any contacts did you talk to someone what did they say and they say yeah I talked to so and so so let's say yeah, I talked to one of the corporate moms. Yeah, she knows X, Y, Z, they're friends or they're cordial. I would then advise you, like, okay, can you see if you're willing to introduce you virtually? I like in person, so can y'all meet for coffee? Can you stop by the school? Can you do a tutoring at their school? You know, we're going to do it all naturally so it doesn't feel like a force. It's like, this is just what will happen naturally anyways. So you think, so that's, I'm trying to word this right. All right, so do you think that's a thing that sometimes we get out there because we feel like we're supposed to be out there instead of doing things naturally or yes. moving in veins that are feel more natural to us? Yeah. Because I think we're taught the adverse, that we shouldn't, anything that's normal or feels normal mm -hmm. to us, we shouldn't do because it's familiar and we should jump out into unfamiliar territory. So my clients laugh at me all the time. I use really crazy examples. My favorite one is kindergarten, okay? So in kindergarten, when you're like building friendships, which is networking, right, building mm -hmm. relationships, you don't like do anything extra or special in kindergarten, you're like, oh, they have a purple juice box. I have a purple <laughs> juice box. Let's be friends. Like that's what happens. Right? True. Oh, you have on a unicorn shirt. I love unicorns. Let's talk. I, I actually love unicorns. Right? That's good you brought that up. But then you have a conversation about unicorns. That this networking, that's the adult version. Like, hmm. 
of that, right? You have a kid that needs tutoring. I actually do tutoring. You know a principal who needs a tutoring program. Let's just have a conversation <laughs> about tutoring, right? It's all natural. It's nothing forced. It wasn't like I, you know, chose you. Now, there are times where you have to be strategic. Yeah. But it should still be natural. It shouldn't be forced. Okay. All right. So we're down to three minutes. Mm -hmm. So Ashley's tidbits. Your advice. Uh, what should people take away from this show today? Um, you got to take action, definitely. You need to network. You have to network. You have to build relationships the right way. Um, you need to be able to humble yourself and ask for help. That's been my biggest issue. A lot of my clients, um, I am their first career branding expert, career coach, so they don't know how it feels. They just know they need help. They're at that desperation phase. You, you get um, help before. You can ask for help before you get to that phase because it's easier you know, to work with. And for those of you who are interested, I do have a free gift. So um, I am writing a book because I get so many questions like this one. Um, ones we talked about today is called uh, Finding Career Freedom. And those of you who are interested, they could text the word career, words, career freedom to 314-665-1767. We'll actually get a free excerpt from the book that will help them move their career forward. Do that again. So if you text the word words, keywords, career freedom to 314-665-1767. They'll get an excerpt from my book that's coming out Black Friday, Finding Career Freedom, to help them move forward. So do I get a free copy? I can get you a free copy. Okay, of course, you'll be here. All right, tell everybody how to get in touch with you really quick. We'll be down in one minute. Um, my, I'm Ashley Dash, so the best way to actually get in touch with me is go to careercorneroffice.com. That is my website, but if you know for a fact that you want to work with me, go to workwithashleydash.com. A completed application, and I would love to speak with you and have a conversation. We have free consultations, and let me help you move forward with your your career so you can be excited. <laughs> and there's more applause! Yay! For the applause! All right, so uh, as usual, if you don't remember anything about today's show, just remember the date. Go to my website, www.ricewithawcommunity.com. Ashley's picture will pop up. It will tell you about her, so you can go search her on all the social medias. Uh, this show we posted on my YouTube page. Go like it, share it, definitely subscribe. The Leadership Blend on YouTube. Watch past shows. Then I'm gonna start putting some other little excerpts on there. So it's gonna be a great time. Ashley, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. Next week, Erica Kane will be back to tell her full story because she was late last time, but I owe her. Sticker, I will see you again next time, same place, same time on the Leadership Blend with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. All right, ma'am. Thank you for thank coming in you. today. You too. We want to say a thank you to Ashley for Thanks, coming guys. in, telling us about stuff. And, you know, she didn't want to give me credit for being that good off the top of my head, but I I, I came up with all that, you know, on, on, you the, did pretty on the moment. On so, the you know, moment. I, I came up with that with the moment. But she brought up a very good point because we do leave a lot of holes because we're not used to being asked questions about those holes. Right. So I would have never even gone into that much detail because, mm -hmm. I, you know, we typically don't. You oh, ask those kinds yeah. of questions. Exactly. Fill the holes. So definitely a big shout out to her. Tell the people on YouTube goodbye. Bye, YouTube. It's been great being with you. Y'all have a great week, and this will be up in about an hour. So see you.